There's a phrase that a John Fung would use when you try to teach people to put forth extra effort in their practice. Either the practice of generosity, or virtue, or meditation. And that was to create a memorial to your life. It took me a while to understand what he was talking about. It's basically, su suppose that in some future lifetime you gain the power of remembering your previous lifetimes. What will you remember about this lifetime? He's basically saying, you'd like to be able to remember something really good that you've done. That was the lifetime when I meditated more. That was the lifetime when I was more generous, more virtuous. So think about what kind of memorial you'd like to have. Otherwise, it's that monotony that the Buddha described of his own memories of previous lifetimes. He was born as this kind of being, and had this appearance, this experience of pleasure, this experience of pain. This was the kind of food he ate. Then he died. Then he was born again. And the same things over and over and over again. Your appearance, pleasure, pain, food, you die. If that's the memorial to your life, then it's not much of a memorial to anything special to remember. So think about what you'd like to be able to remember, and then do that. It's like the people who like to have interesting stories to tell, so they go out and do interesting things. In this case, you want to have something really good to tell yourself. So, of course, one of John Fung's memorials was his, the jetty that we built at the top of the mountain there in the monastery. And when we did the blasting, to clear, the, to clear that little part of the mountain, there was one rock that came up, and it was an almost perfect rectangle. And so John Fung decided that we'd have a Buddha footprint carved in the rectangle. And on the sides of the rectangle, he had the word Edipata placed in the bottom, base of success or base of power, as a reminder of how you build a memorial to your life. The first is desire. You want to do something special. Think about what the Buddha did that was special. He found the path to the end of suffering was able to teach it to many beings. That's probably the most special thing you can do. You may not be able to find the path after all the Buddha has found it for us. But you can find that path inside you, taking his instructions, where to look, how to look. And think about what a good thing that would be. End of suffering. And think about well, what's required to do that. You focus on the path. It's basically virtue, concentration, discernment. We hear so much about how craving is a bad thing in the Buddha's eyes. But there is the desire that's part of right effort, and here it's one of the bases of success. The trick, of course, is to desire the right things and to focus your desire properly on the causes, not so much on the results. Assume that you know the connection between the causes and the results, so you focus on doing the causes. You don't just sit around waiting for the results to come. This is related to the, the Buddha's observation on how wisdom begins. You ask those who know, what when I do it will lead to long-term welfare and happiness. The wisdom that lies in wanting to focus on the causes. You realize that happiness doesn't come floating by. There are causes. There are interactions. So you want to know what to do. And so your desire then gets focused on what you have to do. Try to do this well. You're sitting here watching the breath. What does it mean to watch the breath well? You stay continually with it as best you can. And if you wander off, you come back as quickly as you can, firmly but without a lot of recrimination. And when you come back, reward yourself. Breathe in a way that feels especially good. 
or think of a part of the body that may not be getting much breath energy right now, we'll give it some. In other words, doing this well involves the other basis for success. The first is persistence. You stick with it. You have a clear sense of what's skillful and what's not skillful. And then you motivate yourself to do what's skillful. And then you reflect. The reflection is basically the intentness and the circumspection with which you do this. Those are the other two bases for success. You really give this your full attention. You know, things will come along and try to knock you off. Sometimes ordinary things like distractions, discursive thinking. In other words, thinking that's not involved with the breath right now. And sometimes strange things can happen. Your sense of the body gets strange. Sometimes it swells up. If you opened your eyes, you'd see your body was its normal size. But when you close your eyes, your internal sense of the body gets very large or very small. Or you begin to notice that you're missing certain parts of the body in your inner sense of the body. Or there's sudden waves of energy. Make note, of, <coughs> make note of those things, but don't focus on them. Otherwise you note them and you get back to the breath immediately, because you want to be able to hold on to this breath. Give it your full attention, despite the distractions that come. It's like living in a large, noisy city, but being able to focus on whatever work you have to do. Now, as you stay focused, then the range of your focus begins to enlarge. And the disturbances begin to calm down. You notice in John Lee's book on the craft of the heart, his discussion of rapture is under disturbance. The Buddha lists rapture, of course, as a factor for the first two jhanas. But feelings of rapture are things that you do have to get beyond if you want the mind to be really still. So even though they're one of the rewards of getting the mind to settle down, you can't focus on them. You have to give your breath your full attention. That's what the intentness is all about. You want to do this really well. Don't let your range of attention get divided up. And then reflect on what you're doing. That's what the circumspection is all about. You commit yourself to getting the mind with the breath, and then you watch it. This ability to watch your own mind is really central to the practice. Because after all, how are you going to watch your cravings unless you can watch your own mind? How are you going to watch your clinging? These are the things you're doing. The suffering is not something that gets imposed on you. It's something you do. And the cause of suffering are things that you do. So it's going to be imperative that you have to learn how to observe yourself. Observe yourself as you're being generous. You observe yourself as you're being trying to be hold by the precepts. But you want to also observe yourself as the mind is settling down. The Buddha talks about this again and again and again in the canon. You get the mind in a good state of concentration, get it really snug with this object, get it past the rapture, get it past the pleasure even. There's a sense of clear, bright awareness. Then observe that clear, bright awareness. It seems so pure, so still when you first hit it. It's only when you stay with it for a long period of time, step back a little bit, you begin to see, God, there's still a stress in here. What are you doing that's causing the stress? Look for it. And depending on what you find, either you go to a deeper level of concentration, 
for example, if you see that having the perception of the body as having a shape is imposing a little bit too much on it, okay, drop that perception. Let the body just be a, a cloud, little droplets of mist, not clearly defined. And then realize there's space between those little droplets, and it extends out in all directions. So it seems larger than your range of your awareness. Okay, that's going to be more still than just being with a still breath, but it's sense of the body being filled with your awareness right here. But it's just another state of concentration. You also might, might notice how you're talking to yourself about the stillness, and how many layers of conversation there are about the stillness as you peel this away. It is possible that you can peel away all the levels of fabrication that might be in the mind. And that would go to a place is very different. So there's a lot to explore here. But the important thing is that you learn how to observe your mind in action. Only then can you comprehend suffering, let go of the cause, fully develop the path. So you can realize the cessation of suffering. All of this comes under that quality of asking questions and then looking, paying full attention, asking questions again. This interplay back and forth between intentness and circumspection, commitment and reflection. This is what will take you far. That's how the Buddha found the answer to his question about suffering. How found the answer to questions about aging, illness, and death. Where do these things come from? So many meditators get stuck on things because they're, they're not really good at observing their own minds. They read a passage in the canon, and they look at their minds and say, oh, this must be that, and that must be this. I let go, let go, let go. And they decide they've let go of everything, but they're not watching themselves carefully. They don't bother to turn around and look at, well, who's talking about all this? Remember how the Buddha used the mirror as an image for the path? And he was talking to Rahula from the very beginning. He said, you use the your actions as a mirror to look into your mind. You want to keep wanting to look back at what you're doing. When you talked about the Dharma as a mirror, again, it's looking back at your mind. So try to develop this ability to be still, but also observe what's going on in your mind. You'll see a lot of things you wouldn't have seen otherwise. This is how you develop success in the meditation, how you develop power in the meditation. The kind of meditation that really is worth remembering, a memorial to your life. The fact that at least this time around you met with the Buddhist teachings and you did your best to take advantage of them. This opportunity doesn't always come along, but here it is. So take advantage of it now.